In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. Just now we heard in this Gospel reading about a father who brings his son to Christ to be healed. The father is out of options, running low on places that he can turn. For years, since childhood, his son has been tormented by an unclean spirit who would try to kill him by throwing him into the fire and into the water. His heart is breaking for his son who he sees struggling struggling to live with this demon that afflicts him. And first, the father brings his son to the disciples. Christ at this time was with, was with his three chosen disciples, Peter, James, and John, and Mount Tabor, showing them his full glory. But the other nine, as they received this father and his son and these prayers, were unable to help. And so as Christ returns, the man approaches him and again asks that Christ now cast out this demon. And at the climax of their interaction, before Christ heals the child, the father cries out and says, I believe, help my unbelief. Oftentimes we can think or be convinced that belief, that strong faith and struggle to believe or doubt are mutually exclusive things. But this father, this man in this dire situation shows us that that's not the case. Even the most devout of followers can struggle with moments of unbelief. The father shows us that today. And he gives us this beautiful opportunity through his words to understand what does it mean to believe and yet wrestle with unbelief. How do we hold the tension between seemingly contradictory statements, I believe, help my unbelief? To do this, we first have to look at what we understand about belief. And the way that we understand belief about someone versus belief in someone. Throughout the scriptures, time and again, we see the demons believe. They have a correct understanding about Christ. <coughs> As he heals and drives out demons, they themselves are the ones that proclaim most loudly, most clearly, most truly who Christ is. Earlier in this gospel, according to St. Mark, St. Mark recounts a story of the first time that Christ drives out a demon, and he recounts, quote, and the unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, they fell down before him and they cried out, saying, You are the Son of God. They have a correct belief about who Christ is. But they have no belief, no trust, no faith in the works that he came here to do. Their belief is cognitive. It's knowledge. It's not trust. It in no way affects the way in which they live their lives. St. James, the brother of the Lord, criticizes this type of belief, a belief that knows something about but doesn't actually do anything with Christ. He says, again, referencing the demons, quote, you believe that there is one God good for you. Even the demons believe. As he is criticizing in his epistle those who claim to have faith but we never see that faith manifested in their actions and their deeds. Contrast this type of belief where we know about someone, we know a truth, we know a fact, with the type of belief that Peter has. Peter, the leader of the apostles, regularly misunderstands who Christ is. He has just come down off of Mount Tabor with Christ, where Christ revealed his glory to him, and as Christ shows forth his divinity, Peter says, let's stay here forever. And Christ says, no, I must go to Jerusalem. Peter misunderstands and he wants to stay with Christ and prevent Christ from actually 
doing the ministry he came here to do and ascending the cross. Another time when Christ is talking about his pending crucifixion, Peter takes him aside and says, no, don't go to Jerusalem, don't do that. Christ looks at him and says, get behind me. You don't understand who I am. And so Peter struggles to know about Jesus, to know what, is he, what he's here to do, to know who he truly is. And yet, when it comes to putting faith and trust in Jesus, Peter gets out of a boat in the middle of the sea, sure that he can walk to his master, sure that Christ will not abandon him. And even in those moments when he has his own doubts, he just reaches his hand out and asks for God's help, and God pulls him up. So we see that Peter, although he doesn't understand much about Christ, has eternal faith in him and the works that he came here to do. This is the key to understanding today's gospel, the Father, and moments of doubt and unbelief in our own lives. This man, this father, clearly had trust that Jesus could heal his son. Why try and ask for this man's help if his disciples couldn't do it unless you believe that he was greater than them? He had suffered for years and found no help. He had gone to the disciples and found no help. It was not desperation that brought him to Christ, but it was trust. He had heard that Christ had done this work before, and he believed that Christ will do this for me. He did not give up. Maybe he didn't understand how Christ would do this, but he had faith that he would. He says, I don't know, but I know. I know and I trust that he can, but how I can't say. So he cries out, I believe, help my unbelief. In other words, I trust you, Lord, help me to understand. I trust you, help me to understand. When we face difficult times in our lives and challenges to our faith, questions that arise as we dive deeper and deeper into the mystery of God, we shouldn't be confused and think that the presence of doubt or questions or misunderstandings are evidence of a lack of faith or evidence that we are weak or evidence that we do not love God. We must understand that faith, first and foremost, is the trust in him more so than the understanding about him. But the beautiful thing is the more we trust, the more we will learn. The more we put faith in Christ, the more we will have faith about Christ. Only when our faith is a faith of trust, of turning to the Lord and knowing that he has come here to bring salvation, knowing that he loves his creation, knowing that he will sacrifice and give and that everything he does is to lead us deeper and deeper towards him and his kingdom. Only when we have that type of trust can we hope to have any type of understanding cognitively about who he is. At those moments where our faith is lacking understanding, when we are questioning and struggling, those moments of doubt, cry out the words of this man, I believe, help my unbelief. Oh Christ, I trust you, help me to understand you. Amen.